one of the most challenging things to do is to cut bias piping. Now before we get into those terminologies, let's talk about this piece of cording. We want to cover it with fabric. There's two ways to do that. You can cover the fabric You can cover the cording with the fabric on the bias. You've seen this before. When you, this is just an illustration. If you cut your fabric strips in the bias, you'll get this lovely diagonal design to your cording. If you don't care for the way that looks, or if you just don't have enough fabric to do bias, you can cut it on the straight of grain as well. And that's a cute look too. For today though, we're going to do bias strips. Now remember, we want to have enough fabric to cover the 3 yards and 6 inches of this cording that we've purchased. So how do we figure that out? Well, let's first of all, clean up this piece of fabric from which we are going to cut our strips. And let's see, will this do it? I think it will. We want these strips to come from a piece that is as long as conveniently possible. Okay. On my cutting mat is a bias 45 degree line. And we're just going to line that up. We're just going to line that up with the wrong side up. Wrong side up. Let's push that up a little bit so we can see that line a little bit better. Now do you see it? Here's the beginning, here's the end. Let's take our clear ruler, line up those, those lines on that 45 degree angle. It is important that your fabric be lined up on your clean cut edge with uh, the cross grain line here. Now let's do a cut. So what we have now in our fabric is a 45 degree angle. This is called the bias grain. Straight of grain, cross grain, this is the bias. What's so wonderful about it, it has a wonderful degree of stretch. That can be a plus, can also be a challenge. It's not a challenge in this case, it's going to be a great advantage because it makes covering and using your piping much easier. Okay, so let's take this little pointed end and fold it along the bias cut that we just made. Doesn't that look like an arrow right now? Okay, now we're going to shift the fabric so that the ends that we cut are lined up with a vertical line here. And we're going to start cutting our strips. The most common strip width is one and three quarter inches. When you cut a one and three quarter inch strip, it's enough to cover the cord and then when you sew it, you have approximately a half inch of lip. And this is where you line this up with the cut edges of the top and bottom of your cushion, which you will see later. Okay, so now another thing. How many of these strips do we need to make? Let's measure it. I'm not going to measure from point to point because that is going to be in the seam allowance. So I'm going to measure from about a half inch from this short edge and a half inch from this short edge and we come up with 19 inches. 
So again, calculator. Remember, our circumference was 110 inches. 55 plus 55, we needed 110 inches of fabric. This is 19 inches. So if we divide 110 by 19 inches, that tells us the number of strips that we'll need to cover all of our cording. I come up with five, almost 5.8 strips. You can't have a point eight of something. I'm going to round it up to six. So we'll need six of these 19 inch strips. Let's double check to see if that is correct. 19 times 6 equals 114. Yes. That's going to give us enough. We have one right now. We just need to cut five more strips that are one and a quarter, three quarter inch wide. So we have one, Oh, come on, Peg. That's too far. One and three quarters. That's a half. There we go. Okay. Two. Three. Let's fold this again. So you stay on the table. Don't work ourselves off. Line that back up. So we have one, two, three, four strips. We just need two more. One and two. I'm going to recut this one. Sometimes the fabric moves and doesn't come out just right. This will be number six. Okay. We'll put this to the side for another project on another day. Okay, now. Now you might say, gosh Peg, what's all the fuss about how you cut these? Well, to quickly and accurately make bias strips or any strip that you use to cover your piping with. A diagonal seam like this makes for an excellent seam on covering piping. And the, this piece of fabric, the shape of it, is a parallelogram. These are parallel, these are parallel, and you notice that they're oriented to the left when the fabric shows right side up. We want every single one of them to be left orientation. You may ask me why. Well, when you get to the sewing machine, it's going to go real fast when you're sewing these together. So now we have our six strips. You also see that our stripes are all going in the same direction very important if you're using a stripe. All right, now when you do get to the machine you're going to be joining these strips good sides together and you'll be overlapping them this way so that this little V made by these overlaps is one inch one half of an inch. So you, here's your seam allowance right here, a one half inch seam allowance. When we get to the machine this will be clearer and you'll see how quickly these will go together. Now these are ready to go to the machine. So we talked about taking things to the machine or to the sewing table. Basically you want to accomplish as many like tasks as possible. We've done all of our cutting. The only thing we need to do is we're going to have to come back after we've seen this one piece and recut it. So that's going to be the next thing that we do. Let's go to the sewing machine.